Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here again. Today is a hot day. How do we know we were outside gardening trying to remove two old and diseased rose bushes? Every year is the same thing. No matter what you apply to the roses, they get infested by aphids. So I dug them out and I am a little hot right now still. Anyway, often when I create a video and talk about some ideas, it often then triggers questions and that is good. That is my goal. Remember the video that I made where I discussed the dream features for a dream photo printer? Well, somebody asked, why not create an old black ink printer strictly designated to print monochrome prints? Really, that would be okay, but it's really not necessary. We're gonna discuss two options. Inksupply.com has or had, I haven't checked recently, an ink set that was designated for Epson 1400s and other, other uh, Epson printers at the time and would require no RIP or raster image processor to print from. You could print using the same printer driver, which was awesome. And I went ahead and tried that on my 1400. Great results, amazing. Glossy, not so good, but Matte prints were incredibly dense blacks and full tonality, beautiful. But I can get that with my PA-100. The problem with using a dedicated black and white printer is you better not ever want to print in color unless you have two printers, one for color and one for black and white. So let's talk about what John Cohn from Inkjet Mall offers. When that company was first created, they only dealt with the old black process, the piezography process, and they have ink sets that are cold, bluish, neutral, and warm. And all you have to do is install this ink set, say, on a nine color 3880, 3800, 2880, or any of the bigger format or larger format printers that allow to be refilled because you have to get refillable cartridges load them up with that ink set and then use quad tone rip to print form. And you would have to follow a process to be able to print black and white images that were converted from RGB to RGB black and white, not grayscale, but RGB black and white. And that gives you the maximum level of digital information on your file. Well, the results are awesome, they're great. And people claim that there are differences between me, for instance, printing something on the PA-100 using black and white, either advanced black and white or strictly through an ICC profile and printing from a black and white converted image that used to be color RGB. In other words, still is RGB. All right. I see really no huge difference and no reason for me to then dedicate a printer specifically for that. If I had the luxury of two PA-100s and the PA-100s were refillable, Maybe, maybe I would do that. I would rather do this. I would rather set one for matte and then set one for glossy instead of setting one for just black and white because I can create black and white monochrome prints on the PA-100 that rival just about anything I've ever seen. So let's go ahead and quickly look at some of my recycled prints here. These are prints that I have shown you in the past. I have a picture here of my daughter Judy greeting me at the door when she was a little baby. I actually scanned this from a silver print that began to show signs of fading and silvering. So I thought I better scan this really quick and preserve it. And here it is. I printed it on Red River San Gabriel 1.0. That's stuff that I got from those reverse wound rolls by mistake. Pro 1 using OEM inks. This paper is naturally a little bit warm to begin with. So that imparts a slight warmness to the image, which is great for the subject matter. I would not want this to be cold neutral. I would want this to be the way it is shown here. And that is a little bit warm. And you can see how great that came out. Again, this is from a, a regular 35 millimeter print. I think it ended up being an 11 by 14. I had to actually crop some of it because I could not scan all of it. But this is the most important area of the whole image. And I went ahead and printed it. Now I have it saved and I have it printed on a good paper. This should last years and years and years because it's printed with OEM inks on some good non-OBA type fine art paper from Red River. 
should be great. Let's put this aside a minute. So can you really produce great neutral prints on a printer such as the P800 without having to go through a custom type all black ink system? Of course you can. Now, how do you know if your regular printer is producing prints with a slight bias toward one tone or another? Many people are having problems with Pro 100s, with other printers saying that their prints have a slight magenta cast, that prints have a slight greenish cast, and so on. That may be other reasons. They may be related to color management. It may be related to user error. It may be related because you never initiated your printer using a standard image to find out what it could do by itself before you go and edit your images on your computer that may be off. And so you may be applying that bias without even realizing it. So let's look at this. This is an image that is almost monochromatic. And so this is the kind of image that would tell you immediately that a printer is printing with a bias toward one color or another. Notice the clouds. Notice the overall yellowish look to this image. This is how it looks on the monitor to me. Of course, my monitor is calibrated on a monthly basis to the same standards. Check it out. I see nuances here that I would immediately tell if this print was printing a little bit magenta, for instance. All of this here would start looking a little pinkish. The white portion of the crane is almost kind of bluish white. That's the way it looks on the monitor. So something that has got subtle color would immediately show a problem with a printer printing either too green, too magenta, too bluish, too yellow, whatever. Brightly colored, super saturated images would not show you that. That type of image would immediately just take over and overwhelm any other slight nuances that the printer might be producing either on its own or because of your workflow. So often we miss these little nuances that are problems because our prints really do not show or our images do not allow these little nuances or irregularities to show through onto print. So let's go ahead and look at a black and white. Again, done with the Red River San Gabriel Pro 1. Notice the warmth color. Beautiful young model, at least an aspiring model. She's the daughter of one of our teacher friends. Creamy. This is beautiful. Just as creamy as can be. And again, neutral from the darkest to the whitest. Some of the skin tones are almost as white as the paper base and there are no differences all over the grass you see you don't see different tonalities you don't see a multicolor type shading effect so do i really need an all black ink printer probably not not if you can produce prints like that if you show me the same exact print and i go wow this is day and night then then i would be a believer but i've already used those ink sets and i really haven't detected any any discernible difference between printing on the P800, for instance, this is P800 printed on enhanced matte roll paper using advanced black and white system. It only uses the black, the light black, light light black, and then it utilizes other colors, yellow and magenta, to impart a certain tonality that you choose. Here I chose neutral. And you can see how neutral it is. Especially here. Here you see tons of tonal graduations that would immediately show you if there was any non-linearity of neutrality, say for instance. Exactly the same thing happens here in the sand. Exposed sand bank, tide has gone out, you see the uh, stranded fishing boats. Again, that would immediately show up. You would be able to see, it would look like a duotone, okay? It would look like shadows are a different color than mid-tones and a different color than highlights, but not the case with this, it all looks neutrally and evenly neutral throughout. So again, I don't think you need an all black ink system. Of course, I'm not against it at all. I think it's awesome. I wish I had a, like I said, a separate model printer, one that I have already for color. I would, hell, hell yes, I would set it up for black and white ink only. 
This is a great image to prove that point because it has all of this really subtle, almost blurry tonalities. Here are the two figures. You may not see this on video, but there are two figures standing at the top of this little crest. And in the back, you see the hills slightly lighter toned so that they stand out as silhouettes. The white sky, rays of light coming through, you would see any kind of non-linearity of tonality. Okay, but this is evenly, evenly neutral. Again, P800 Precision Colors inks, okay, which should not work that well with advanced black and white because we don't know how well matched those black inks are to OEM black inks. Apparently they are, and the result is here. If that wasn't the case, I would have to adjust the tonality by hand on the advanced black and white tab in, in uh, control uh, panel. So there you go. Again, I do not think we need to have an all black ink system. It would be one hell of a good luxury and I don't know who would buy such a thing. I guess people would buy it. But um, you could do the same thing with your regular ink set. So why bother? Without having to change anything, by the way, you would not have to do anything. Look at that. Totally neutral throughout. P800, PC inks. The same case would be on the Pro 1. Here's my shot of the rear end of the elephant. Look at the tonality on that photograph. I mean, you just cannot believe how deeply black that is right there. And all of these little hairs are as white as the paper. And the tonal range is full. The contrast is amazing. And again, P800, PC inks, and advanced black and white. And Epson enhanced matte paper. You would need an image this grotesquely uh, oversaturated and you could almost not detect any problem your printer may be having. If you print stuff like this you will never be able to tell whether your printer is printing greenish, magenta-ish, bluish, yellowish, reddish, whatever. You will not be able to tell because it will be so overpowering that any kind of uh, skewed color balance problem would just be absorbed by this type of uh, incredibly saturated image although it is beautiful but again it's not going to tell you or help you determining that the best way to determine that again like i always say gosh i'm tired of saying that initiate your printer and the first thing you do is print a standard image and analyze that standard image there are so many aspects to the collage that you get in one of these images that you will be able to analyze many different things and be able to determine many performance problems that the printer may have out of the box that you may not be aware of. What you want to do is you want to certify that your printer can print that standard image perfectly or as close to perfect as possible. Once you establish that, then that is done. It's a done deal. Now you have to worry about your monitor. Worry about your monitor displaying colors correctly. All right, not this way, that way, this way, or that way, but correctly. And the only way to achieve that is to calibrate the monitor with a hardware calibrator. I highly, highly recommend X-Rite. I know there's a lot of spider fans out there, but the reputation among experts is that spider calibrators are not really as good as the X-Rite, or as accurate as the X-Rite products. So consider going to one of the cheaper X-Rite monitor calibrators. They will not set you back more than $130 if you use the Color Monkey display, for instance. Once you get more advanced and you start using ICC profiles and you want to create your own to tweak the last bit of quality out of that printer, paper, and ink combination, then you will want to then consider buying a Color Monkey photo model. And that is the one that I have. It is the best. $450 I have ever spent, okay, is something that I will never regret having bought. 
All right, that is it. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this little dissertation. Again, to summarize, it would be awesome to have a dedicated black and white printer, but I don't think it's really necessary. And the reason that why a printer company such as Canon and Epson and even HP has not come up with one yet, because they also know it's really not necessary. Their printers can produce beautiful black and white with full tonalities. Now, I'm not going to argue against cone color, inkjet mall, the piezography, inkset. They have their place. And some of these people are dedicated to use their printers only for black and white. And yes, that ink system using the quad tone rip software will produce incredible prints in black and white. So again, both systems are great, but you will have to dedicate one printer to just that. And I don't think most people are willing to do that, at least not I. Anyway, thank you once again. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Black and white is awesome. Bye-bye.